Parking space for 21 Snow Street. We call it on street parking. Is that? That's fine. On street, on street mm -hmm. parking fine. allocation. Yeah. yeah, and I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded to approve one additional on street parking space for 21 uh, Snow Street. All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Just quickly while sure. you're here, yeah. the historic designation, sure. you got a quick update. I can give you a quick update. Um, Scott Newman, who's our consultant, is making good progress. He's surveyed the area, the uh, additional area up around the school that uh, we talked about before. We did a contract amendment that added the area bounded by High Street. Um, Hill Street, Railroad Street, and Stowe Street, and then also Swayze Court. So he surveyed all of those houses, and um, he'll be finishing up the, um, the work. His contract goes until, I believe, the end of June. We, we did allow plenty of time, but I think he's going to be done well in advance. So once we get a draft, we'll, we'll bring that. We'll have him come and give you a presentation. I think that would be helpful as soon as we have a map and um, just to give you an update. Time's running down. I, I understand. <laughs> I will, I will uh, get a hold of him and, and find out what his time frame is for putting that together. Does it look like we would have time to make this initial application while there's still trustees, but it would be the select board to finish? Well, we got a time frame, and um, I don't think so. Uh, I think. Um, it, it will probably get uh, submitted <clears throat> to the state, but there's a whole review process at the state level, and they have to give it their blessing. And then um, we have to hold a public hearing, I believe. I, um, I'll forward you the schedule. I know I asked him about that, and it, I think it, by the end of the year is, uh, I actually talked to Devin Coleman, the state um, architectural historian, about the schedule at the state level. And um, you know, anticipating having, um, you know, unless we have something very soon from Scott that's complete, uh, the schedule would go uh, through the summer and into the fall. And I think the hope is that we would have everything done, including National Park Service approval, by the end of this calendar year. But we may be able to start the process before oh, June 30th? Yeah, we can definitely start the process. That's all I was. Sure. You know, yeah. if it's in the work. Yeah, right? it's def definitely in the works. And I think it would be a good idea to have Scott come and give you a presentation since this is your project and and get your input. Yeah, it may be worth it to try to do it jointly right. with the select board. That, that would yeah. probably be a smart idea. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, that, that's a very good yeah. idea. So, yeah. okay. So keep you posted on that. Thank you. Okay. See, thank you. Thank you. You're thank you. Very well. Uh, next up, uh, consider a request on the police department closeout that Bill has that for us. Yeah, we talked about this at a meeting in December, and at the time we chose to do it in an executive session. Um, I'm not certain that it needs to be in an executive session now because we don't have employees anymore in the police department. Um, just to remind you, a, um, uh, Craig Nolan, an attorney with the firm of Shady Furlong and Deb from uh, Burlington, uh, wrote a letter and sent it by email uh, back on December 27th. And <coughs> basically asked for a, a decision within the next day or two. Um, 
about his request. To refresh your memory, uh, he is representing uh, Joe Fischer. Uh, at the time, he said he was representing Anthony Mazzilli as well. Um, Anthony talked to me at the time and said, he's not my lawyer, he's not representing me. And when I talked with Mr. Uh, Nolan uh, a couple of weeks ago, he told me that Anthony confirmed with him that he was not interested in this action. So um, what he is alleging from his client is that uh, the termination of the Waterbury Police Department employees was illegal and was uh, done in a fashion not in accordance with law. Uh, and he cites the uh, statute that we're all too familiar with where a police officer can only be dismissed for cause. And uh, as we discussed a couple of different times last year, the uh, premise that he makes this claim on is that uh, because the village is on a calendar year budget and doesn't adopt a budget until March meeting, which really doesn't go into effect until 30 days after, after the appeal period goes by, um, he's suggesting that there is nothing different between any prior year and the changeover from 2017 to 2018, where he's saying uh, the budget in years past um, has been adopted in March of, say, 16, and you keep operating that department right through April of 17, even though you don't have a budget passed by that time. And you, you do that with every other department in the municipality. Um, in the village's case, it's not really true because that was the only department that we had that voters get to act on the budget. The voters don't approve the water and sewer budget, says you know. So he basically said uh, they were employed um, and that the, the village took no action save what the trustees did back in October, which was to say we're going to terminate the department as of December 31st. I explained to him that it was clear, uh, made clear during public hearings before the Charter Amendment uh, and going all the way back to as far back as last year's village meeting that when the village voters instructed you to look at the possibility of disbanding the police department that they suggested that they wouldn't have one in 2018 if that was a decision they made. Um, he suggests, and I think he's correct, I don't have the Charter Amendment with me, but he says the Charter Amendment itself doesn't say anything about the police department ceasing to exist on December 31st. It, talks about the police department will go away, but it doesn't say when. So his position is the village still is in existence, as you are. You're here meeting right now. Uh, he says the village is still in existence, that the police department was um, in place through December 31st, 2017, with a budget that was passed last March, and that you should have allowed it to roll over and excuse me, suggested that they should be uh, paid through June 30th when the village actually dissolves. Um, he alleges that the action that you took back in October were on your own motion. You decided not to have a police department provide service after January 1st was not within your authority and that you, um, you should um, pay show me through um, June 30th. Um, as you know, uh, when this issue was first raised to me, um, we did, I did talk to uh, an attorney, um, and then Skip and I went and talked to Paul Giuliani, who helped with the charter amendment. Uh, Paul felt that the village was on solid ground to do it. He said that voters elect the trustees to um, administer the village and they had the right to say the department wasn't going to exist after December 31st 
based on the fact that the bill of charter was amended. So back in December, when I brought this issue to you, uh, you listened and you took no action. I informed Mr. Nolan that, thank you very much, and the trustees have taken no action. Um, he wasn't happy about that at the time, but that was, we had a pretty brief conversation. Uh, he did call back a couple of weeks ago and said, you know, my uh, claim is still out there. Uh, you know, he, he asked if we, if I had alerted our insurance company that there was a potential wrongful termination suit being considered. I said I did send this to the insurance company. They're aware of it, but they're not going to do anything until you actually file suit. So they, they know you've sent this letter. I know you've sent the letter and the trustees have said thank you very much. So um, I'm not recommending that you change your, that you change your mind about this, um, but I want to let you know that he brought the issue back. I told him it was, uh, I think we had like a month between trustees meetings. Uh, right. We met in February. And I said, you know, they're having a village meeting, and then the next week they're, they're not going to meet as usual, and they won't be meeting until the end of March. And he said, well, I'd, I'd like them to consider my, you speak a little louder, don't my letter again. So here we go. Yeah, thank you for that explanation, Bill. And, uh... and one last thing, Skip. Um, you know, when, when we talked to Giuliani about this, I shared with him some of the conversations that I had with other attorneys and um, expressed that, you know, there's, there's a risk that if he files suit that you could lose. And Paul's response, well, there's always a risk. But um, he thought that you were on firm ground. Uh, so as I said, I'm not recommending you do anything different, and I'm not going to speculate as to what the insurance company might do, do if a suit is filed. Um, so anyway, I'll stop there. You can ask questions if you have them, but I don't think I have much more information than I just shared. So. And as we talked in the actions that we did, and then we held the vote at, uh, on the charter change in June, so it was full six months ahead of, um, you know, when we would expect that it, uh, you know, that it terminated the police department in January, or December 31st. So they had six months notice, and then we talked, like you said to Paul, about the motion that we made to, uh, you know, send them a notice in, I think, Octo late October that we were going to um, close things out as of December 31st. That, and we gave them some, you know, money in return for there. So right. I feel like we've given them all the notice that we did and yeah, following and, and the I, advice. I shared that with Nolan, and he said, well, nobody's arguing that they didn't know this was coming, and nobody's arguing that you didn't give them you know, they yep. knew in June that the charter passed, and they knew in October what you said, but he said they don't have the authority to to yep. make that decision that they made in October because, and you know, what he's saying now, I can share this, is, you know, the village, the village does have a budget for 2018. We have a residual police department budget. We've got to pay the debt on the cruiser. <coughs> We've got rent to pay for the, for the, uh, office space there until May. Uh, we have uh, insurances that we're paying. So he said, you know, it's not like you didn't have a budget. It's not like the village went away. You just chose right. to eliminate a uh, police officer's position, and you don't have the right to do that without cause. And but the voters voted a budget that didn't include them. So I don't see how he argues that the voters didn't do it, because they did that at village meetings. So. Right. And again, I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, yep. but he would say that, well, that vote isn't binding and effective until the 30-day appeal period goes by, and you've got January and February and March 
I know, I, yeah. I'm not trying to argue in their favor. I'm just trying to tell you what his response to it, And he can do that, but he hasn't changed my opinion, and I guess I'm not inclined. I wouldn't support doing anything different than we did at this point. Um, did you speak to um, any attorney or Giuliani after this, this most recent conversation? Um, no. Because nothing was new. There really there's wasn't no, any new nothing, information there's presented. Nothing yep. There's nothing changed. Um, and I, I told him, I said, I think it's very unlikely the trustees are going to change their minds. Plus, he didn't work. I don't see how he argues we should owe him, even if, you know, if he didn't work. He wasn't here. Well, that's a different question. A little bit anyway. different. As I said, I'm not recommending that you do mm -hmm. uh, what but he's just asking. I'm just acknowledging that he's, he's asking again. No, I'm comfortable for letting it go forward as, as it is. Okay. So the minutes can show that we heard the request, but we declined to take any action with regard to supporting the request. Is that it on that? Um, next steps on 51 South Main Street. Um, I just wanted to fill folks in on what, um, since village meeting there, Chris Parsons had called me and he wanted a tour through it. Um, he hadn't been inside at all. Um, I got a hold of Woody, uh, who took us through the building, uh, <laughs> toured it inside and um, outside there. He's, Chris is still interested as soon as um, we might do something he's interested. I kind of shared with him, uh, you know, that we were looking at, um, I should have asked Steve there, um, mm -hmm. whether if there was any option to subdivide the property if Chris needed the whole property to do what he did. I don't, you had spoke well, to Steve, <clears throat> that's yeah, Steve. I, I talked to Steve after I asked him to look into it. And he pointed out that the biggest feature that we'd have to settle right off would be how many parking spaces uh, that Chris's project would need to depend on what you would have left for, mm -hmm. for parking. So Chris would have to determine what he's actually applying for before you could actually answer the question. But he does have an estimate. Yes. So based on that estimate, I think that would be he has, a good... of course, been before the boards to clarify mm -hmm. his actual number, yeah. What, but as a scenario, it yeah. seems workable. It, it, we're probably talking about a difference of four or five spaces at the most. Steve's not here. He's gone. So, mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like we don't have... We need more information before Steve could before they could actually give you a, a firm uh, number of parking spaces. Yep. Uh, I also had a complaint to uh, Chris, the motion that was made at town meeting with regard to those extra funds and that anything, if we took their money, anything for spaces needed to be a 99 year lease, which um, amounts to ownership. He, uh, he didn't think that he wanted to kind of give up any parking that he would give us for 99 years was uh, something he would right. look favorably <clears throat> upon um, and things here. So, um, and I took, I've called uh, Carruthers Environmental that did the hazardous waste, or hazardous materials assessment and found the asbestos. Um, they gave us a quote of six thousand dollars to remove it um, but before they would do anything we needed to get a written permission from Dan Johnson in order to for them to act on it that he did the assessment and paid the bill even though it was our building and uh, even though he told us we could use it they didn't have anything in writing so mm -hmm. we need to kind of 
be able to do that, we need confirmation from Dan that we can do that. And also, I haven't um, had time to contact anybody about uh, taking the building down and recycling the materials, you know, what the options are, or getting any prices to do that. Um, that we talked about at village meeting that we would get those and then see where they came in as to you know what we would do also um, you know at that time we didn't know anything about the TD bank parking but it sounds like have you heard anything official as to it who the owner is or what it's been no I mean I've heard um, I can't remember the gentleman's name but I hear that there has somebody that's got a purchase and sale agreement that looks like it's been accepted, but it's kind of in the Byzantine maze of TD Bank in, Tor in Toronto. You know, they've got to go through their processes. And I had heard the same information that as far as the parking lot, he was considering a paid parking lot there where you'd have one of those kiosks that spits out a ticket and he would. Evidently, he's got a couple, the gentleman has a couple of properties in Burlington, and I think he's got a parking lot near where the Key Bank is there in Burlington. I can't remember the street. Oh. And uh, that parking lot, he's got an arrangement with a towing company to do his enforcement. So they go through the lot, and if there's not a ticket in your window, they tow you out. So you don't need a police department to write a ticket. You just mm -hmm. tow them away, and it's your. You got to figure out where your car is. So. Because um, you know it might differ on our looking at 51 whether there was still available parking at TD Bank versus parking was prohibited at TD Bank, and he put a bigger demand on uh, right. alternative parking there. So. Um, <coughs> So that's where we are. I guess my inclination is to continue to try to get a prices to take the building down and get the hazardous materials out and then see if we wanted to do that. And then if we did that, um, does it affect the price that Chris Parsons would be willing to uh, offer to us? And right. what? Would we do at that point? Is that okay? Yeah, it sounds reasonable. I mean, if we pay for taking it down, we should get a bigger number for the property. Mm -hmm. You know, and there would, if it's down, there's even more parking spaces available during uh, the yes. main street, regardless of what happens. Uh, yeah, we still want that as much parking for main street reconstruction, even if. TD is fully available. <clears throat> um, yes, that's a good. You know, and the next folks, step. Chris suggested this too. If we're looking at taking it down, whether you know, if they somebody took the vinyl siding off, then could it be burned or not? You know, whether somebody could do it cheaper and stuff. But you know, that's something to look at. And there was still quite a bit of stuff in there that needs to get out of there, kind of. Upstairs? Pardon? Upstairs? Yeah. Well, there's a few things downstairs, even. Uh, a couple of air conditioners and lockers and stuff out in the police department. And, mm -hmm. um, upstairs was some furniture and uh, many boxes of records, I don't know. Those wooden lockers in the police department we're talking about? Yeah. I guess, I don't know whether they were the personal lockers or something there. Something that they came from Norwich University. Yeah. Well, likely they did. They looked like antique. Chris was pretty interested. Why? Well, they're like oak. Uh, yeah, they're, they weigh a ton. <laughs> they were too big to go in upstairs on the third floor. Right. They measured them, but they couldn't get them where to get them up there. <laughs> Is everything out of the other police department there now? Over? I'm pretty sure, yeah. All the furniture? I, I think so. I haven't been for s several weeks. Yeah. But I put Woody on that quite a while ago, and he 
started right away. So I think it's pretty much yep. done. Um, so we'll continue uh, along those lines, and then uh, when we get something, we'll bring it up. Okay. Um, conflict of interest policy. Did she give it to you? Do you have it there? Mm. I don't see it. Is it in the book? No, I doubt it. Carla was supposed to give it to you, but I think she forgot. These are copies for the legislature. Yeah, so. We'll have to do it in a future meeting. Okay. Um, update on the legislative charter change. Um, Bill and I are scheduled to go back tomorrow morning at 8.30 to talk about uh, the UDAG policy in particular, but in talking to Bill, we really spent more time on uh, the history of how we got here in the village, kind of what's going to go away. We didn't really talk about the operation of the water and sewer department um, and how these funds have kind of been used and things. They've uh, inquired from rural Vermont to know how utility districts operate, um, which um, we can certainly tell them how we've been operating for a hundred years and the magnitude of um, both the water and sewer that have over a million dollar budgets each and I was Ben and Jerry's that kind of started this issue of the UDAC money I kind of looked asked Karen how uh, how much water and sewer bills they each paid I mean they paid to each and I guess I was a little surprised that it was over a hundred thousand dollars that Ben and Jerry's paid both to water and to sewer. That I didn't realize it was that much. But uh, is that what was in your email? Did yeah. You oh, I thought it said twenty-five thousand. Uh, hundred and twenty-five. Oh. Okay. You know, which I just thought that. I think most people kind of think of uh, when you talk about a fire district, you're looking like somebody with 50 or 100 yeah, houses like on a there. Yeah, you know, and that's, we're certainly not that. And as Bill points out, this is really a name change. It's not really any, we're not going to be doing anything much different other than giving up this zoning and stuff and things. But, um, they raised the question about how we use the UDAG money, and it's really, uh, I don't know, you, uh, we've made 25 loans more or less, and yeah. they've all been facilities that connect to the water and sewer, and, <coughs> you know, I think it's a great idea to use them to help promote the um, connection to those facilities, particularly the sewer department, because it only, it has 400 less customers than the water department. So it, it's more in need of right. more customers and we're dropped a couple hundred thousand gallons a day in flow after Irene. And so, uh, so I've written up some things that Bill edited and made much clearer to give to them tomorrow and uh, the two of you, you are welcome to come and listen if you want. Alrighty. Uh, it's 8.30 at the Government Operations Committee room there. Who was the fellow from Rural Water that's coming? Sean, um, I can't remember his last name. Is he? An actual water system operator, or he's I this think rural he's the water executive director of the Rural Water Association, he's to which we belong. And yeah, you know, I talked to him today. He called and just uh, wanted to let me know that he had been asked to come and testify. He didn't have anything really to say about this, mm -hmm. and that all he was going to say is that you know, Waterbury Water Department has been a 
long-standing member of the organization, that they take advantage of training opportunities that we offer, that, you know, from all of his knowledge of the system, it's very, very well run and very professional. So, um, he, you know, they kind of summoned him. He's, he's not going there to object to this at all. <laughs> well, that's good. I I don't, I think we could tell them more how we operate better okay. than anyone else anyway. We'll do that. Um, you know, and I, I like to write out things that I was going to say anyway, and I think it's good to give them. I don't know if the chairman passed it around to the <coughs> members. Well, I think you but, should hand it out just like you did last time. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, Skip. Uh, Jamisha and Stevens. Setting in on these discussions or not? Um, they set in on the first one for a while, and then they had to leave to go to their own committee meetings there. But did they give formal testimony? Um, yeah, they 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 each sat at the table, said their name, who they represented, and basically introduced us. They didn't. Um, really make a lot of statements except for the fact that the village voted to amend the charter. They didn't say anything about the operations or, you know, I think Tom mentioned the number of merger uh, tribes that we had and things like that, but Is they didn't talk about it. An affirmative or negative support of the philosophy that we're going through? Um, I believe they both said that they were supportive of the charter amendment, um, but they didn't go into any detail. Thank you. Um, anything more on that? No, thank you for doing uh, You think you want to come detail. tomorrow? Or? I have to work tomorrow. Oh, that gets in the way of a lot of fun things. Just sneaks in there. Yeah, so I'm not available. Yeah, probably go. You can uh, catch a ride with Bill. I gotta have my car up to Cody's at seven in the morning, so I'm gonna <coughs> shuttle down to the legislature. But uh, and I think having more there is better to yeah. kind of show the support for oh, I think it's good. what we voted on and um, things here. So good. Um, I just put on there the minutes of the annual meeting. Are they in there? Let's Usually see. they're on a different size sheet of paper, so I don't okay. know. Well, we've got two sets. We've got a February 14th minutes and the annual meeting minutes of March 7th. They are here. Hmm. They don't go in the big books. She'll probably copy them into there. Huh? So I'll make a motion to approve both of those February 14th and March 7th meeting minutes. A second. The motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes of the annual village, the last annual village meeting of March 7th and the meeting of the, uh, is that a joint No, meeting it's, a, it's just us. The Valentine's Day Trustees Minutes of February 14th. Special. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Now for our longest serving left-handed trustee to sign.
We're going to get a binder that has the binder over here just for you for the next time. On top. Or do you have to change it? <laughs> um, and I put down here the next meeting for us, which will be, uh, what, April 10th or something, is it? 11th. 11th? April 11th is your next trustees meeting. I think you're meeting on Tuesday, April 2nd with the select board. I hadn't heard that. Oh, well, it was, we've been I talking we about, about it. about it. Who? I, nobody you. talked to me. Well, it's on my schedule. I think we talked about it. Oh, well. Uh, Let's see. The We're night of a big the big game? Yeah, you won't have to stay that long. The adoption of the local operations management plan. Both of us would be in on that. That was the big draw. Yeah. The game doesn't start until like 8.30 or 9 o'clock, right? <laughs> Yeah. You can We're say in. the same thing you did tonight. I've got somewhere to be. We're going to go fast. <laughs> well, that wasn't the meeting I was intending to talk about, but uh, <laughs> the one I was going to thought we talk about was the one on the 11th, where Bill will not be here, right. and uh, I've scheduled the uh, folks who wanted this punk park event to come in and talk to us. And also now that the uh, the cars have been advertised and um, they're lefties coming back been, in on Monday and Lefty's been fielding the inquiries and showing them around the ones who've come. So the uh, advertisement for the cars went out uh, on the police chief's list, sort of throughout the state, so all the police departments know about it. And in the advertisement, I said the trustees' desire is for a Vermont police or sheriff's department to get this vehicle, these vehicles. And, uh, you know, I didn't, there was no minimum bid required. I did say that the village had the right to reject any and all bids. So if you get one bid and it's too low, you don't have to take it. Um, and if you sell it, they'll be sold with the police radios in it. That was in the advertisement. If we don't sell it to a police agency, then we'll take the police radios out. The fire department has a use for them. Um, we can, whether they have to buy them or you just give it to them, that's a different question. But um, when I talked to Gary, he said, you know, if they'll help the cars sell, a police department leave them in there so we've left the radios and that's how it's been advertised so the bids are due by four o'clock i think it was on the ninth which is monday and then uh, it's stated in the notice that the trustees will consider the bids at their meeting on wednesday the 11th time to be determined so is there any deposit required or anything or no no no. So we can, uh, if there's a bid we like, we can reject any or all bids if we think it's too low. Yeah, if, I mean, whether there's one bid or ten bids, if you don't think any of them are high enough. And I did tell them that they had to bid on each vehicle separately, that we wouldn't entertain a bid for, you know, 7500 for both. They had to make a bid on the Crown Vic, and they had to make a bid on the uh, SUV, S separate bids. So that way, you know, one department might be the high bidder on the SUV and another department on the Crown Vic. And they're both as is, no? Yeah, I think that's Is it totally clear. off warranty for? Right. Made pretty clear. And I'm sure the people that are interested, you know, I'm sure lefties talk to them. You know, the, the few phone calls that I've received, I told them that all of the recalls that were, we are aware of have been, uh, you know, we've gone to the dealership and had the 
The exhaust one was the last one that we did, right? Yeah, they did the exhaust and the front end yeah, of the right. SUV. There was right. a recall that came to light while the thing was at Formula Ford, and they, they did <coughs> it right then and there. And we've had the town highway garage try to investigate rattles and bangs and there, stuff like that. There's a, there's a rattle in the exhaust pipes of the crown there. I took it up to the highway garage and had them put it up on the left, and it actually has the baffles that cover the mufflers and stuff, but the rattle is in between, and you can take away the baffles and do away with the rattle, but, but you lose the protection of having them on there, so if somebody buys it, they can make their choice whether they want to, you know, take the baffles off and quiet it down. You know, it's, you don't hear it inside the car, it's just you're standing outside and you hear it rattle. Have you tested them for top speed yet? I put the foot down a couple of times, but <laughs> I haven't. Uh, there's this one person took it out to try them out yesterday, and uh, they were quite pleased with it, so I'm sure we're going to get a bid from them. But uh, don't know too much about the others. You any questions on? No, I think it's all in good hands at this point. Yes, as long as I don't have to do it. <laughs> um, anything else for that meeting while you're on? Are you back for our second meeting or? I believe so. Yeah, your second meeting will be on the 25th. I'll be back for that. So. And uh, we have some cookies. Maddie let us know that it was her last day. Oh, or when's your last day? Or, okay, well, so I will actually, because you guys are meeting jointly with the select board, I'll be there on Monday. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Shelburne, Sherlock, and Heinsberg. Oh. Oh, to work with Lisa. Yeah, I'm going to be working with Lisa. Oh, so, yeah. shifting things around. <laughs> Do you live down that way? No, I live in Morrisville. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm moving soon, I guess. I don't really, this is all very new to me. <laughs> wow. So when is your last day? My last day with the record is next Wednesday. Hmm. Yep. So. Well, we thank you for your coverage and things, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. it seemed I like you all about merging, non-merging, I don't know what to call it, a merger, not a merger thing. So, thank you. <laughs> and she it took the official pictures of the Keith Wallace Award that <laughs> <laughs> since Gordon wasn't there for us this year and yes. that you did forward those to me. And, yes, I did those to you. And things, so we, we thank you for that. How long? Do, were you in this job? Six uh, months? Eight months. Eight months? Yeah, I started in August. So, yeah. I will, if you guys end up going to the uh, Christmas party next year, I'll still be there because I'm working for the same company. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you then. And around town. <laughs> Waterbury can't get rid of me that easy. Well, we wish you well. And <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, good luck. It's going to be great working with Lisa. She's a great person. Good, good. And you're not leaving, are you, Denise? Here? No. Not good. until June. Not until the end of June. <laughs> <laughs> so. so you're ready good. to adjourn? Yes, I'll make a motion to adjourn at 5. We're 20 22. minutes ahead of schedule, 22. so Denise ought to give us credit. Yeah. Good job. Second that? Second it. Uh, All those in favor say, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, thank you.